Hi there, Prairie Plant Girl here. Does your finished compost look more like this? All light, crumbly, fluffy, nice small pieces ready to plant in? Or does it look more like this? Lots of large chunks, a few sticks, possibly even a little bit of food or yard waste that hasn't quite broken down like this chunk of leaves. There's a big stem off something. My experience is this in this bucket that's nice and fine and crumbly is a myth if you think you're going to be pulling it out of the bottom of your compost bin, especially in a climate like mine. I'm in Saskatchewan, Canada. I have a very short uh, frost-free season and our winters get very cold. The bin eventually freezes solid for several months. So this, this is not my reality, but this is what I get when I use a sifter and put this, I put this on my sifter and what I get out of it is this. And I can get a large amount of beautiful homemade compost. With hot composting, I can get this out of it several times a year. Um, if I do just a layer uh, cold composting, just throw it in and wait for it to break down, um, it could take me a, a couple of years to get a product that looks like this. And I'll still have to sift it out of this usually. I'm out emptying the compost today. Not a very glamorous job, but uh, one that I find very satisfying because I get to take my old uh, yard scraps and kitchen scraps and turn them into some beautiful uh, soil that I can use in my garden. Um, uh, so my plan for this compost is to use it over in the area where I've been working on pulling up grass and creating a new flower bed. So I've been using, I had some compost from last year and I've had some bags, a triple mix of things. So I'm just kind of using whatever, whatever I can get my hands on to, you know, cover up the paper I'm putting down over the, the grass and uh, create a nice healthy soil to plant my plants in. So right here you can hopefully see the difference. Here's the bagged triple mix. I was using there's some paper, shredded paper in there because that's what I'm using underneath it. There's the bagged triple mix. There's my sifted homemade compost. And then I do have some rough compost in here as well that was from last year that I'd taken out in the fall to start my bin again. And it's pretty rough, it wasn't quite finished. So I thought it might be interesting for some of you to see, you know, what comes out after I've done, I do a lot of videos about my hot composting. So to see kind of the state it is in when it's finished and uh, what I do to, to make it just a really nice soil to use. So, um, I'm kind of at the bottom of the bin here. I started yesterday, so it's a little bit rougher at the bottom. I don't always get that stirred in, but it's, you know, it still has some chunks, some bigger sticks and twigs and things in it. Um, there's a few leaves here. Like I said, I didn't uh, get all the way to the bottom. I can tell stirring sometimes. So there are a few leaves and bits of paper and things that obviously didn't get, um, that didn't get uh, composted properly, they didn't get mixed in, but uh, it's usually kind of a, a rough, chunky kind of mix like this. Um, but what comes out of it is just beautiful. So when, I'm, when I uh, prepare my compost and to take it out of the bin, I take it and I put it on this uh, kind of sifter here. So it's just a piece of hardware cloth on a wooden frame, just something I built real rough out of scrap materials and I just sift it out so this is what it looks like when I start when I put it on the sifter now it's been raining so much here it's very wet this is a lot easier process when it's been dried out but I just take it and kind of work it through the sift, sieve here like I said if it was dry I could just pretty much shake it and the good compost will fall right through but when it's wet like this I find I have to kind of work it work it through a little bit and like I said I'm at the bottom of the bin so sometimes there's some bigger chunks of leaves and things that haven't really broken down because they haven't gotten mixed in properly
So it takes a while. I've been working on this for a few hours. But to me, that effort is worth it to get the end product. Now, sometimes if I'm in a hurry, I'll just take this, especially if I'm just using it to like mulch on my garden beds or something with, uh, I'll just take this just raw, or just rough like this out of the compost bin and just put it straight over on my garden beds. Cause the rest will eventually break down and I don't need it real fine if I'm just using it like a mulch. Doesn't look as pretty, but still does a nice job. It probably actually holds more moisture with more of the rough bits of wood and, and uh, leaves that haven't broken down. And like I said, it's really wet from all the rain we've had. I should have covered the composter up. I didn't realize how much rain was getting in it. I think you can see there pretty much what's left is you know some really big sticks that probably shouldn't even be in there anyways but we just keep going through some smaller twigs some more fibrous bits off of things and like I said there's a bit of leaves in that some of this I know I can just tell by digging in the bin just didn't get mixed into the rest of the the compost and didn't get heated up in the same way um, so this I'll, I'll take and I'll just put it in a bucket and I'll mix it back through my compost bin when I set up a new one. And what's left, what I get out of it is this beautiful compost. And it's really nice, it's airy, it's fluffy, it's just beautiful. Odd stick gets through there, but that's okay because it just adds to the loaminess of it, I think, or the, the airiness. Just a little bit of eggshell in there. It'll all break down eventually, but it just adds to that nice texture that we want. So I've got this little bit in this bucket here. I have this great big bucket here, which I can see some ants. It seemed to be an ant colony in the bottom of the compost. It's been waiting a while for me to get to it. Um, and then I have my whole um, garden cart full as well. So lots of nice compost, and I still have just a little bit left so I need to keep working on this. So I have lots of leaves and garden waste and yard, um, like food waste, you know, from trimming off cauliflower, bananas, whatnot in the kitchen there. Uh, and I'm ready to, to start a new bin. I just need to get this one just emptied out here. And then I'll start a whole new batch of hot compost. I also need to trim my grass, it's getting pretty long. So that, that always works really well to put that in the bin as well. So I hopefully I'll be able to get a full bin put together. So I'll just lay, layer uh, one part of um, like household, like kitchen waste, yard waste, things that are typically referred to as greens and composting, things that are alive or were recently alive, you know, leaves, vegetable peelings, fruit trimmings, grass, weeds that you pull up can go in, and then um, I'll put in two parts of browns, which is uh, things that uh, have died back that are natural, like your brown leaves from the fall, or I use um, The, the thatched grass that I pulled up out of the lawn in the spring. Uh, and that works really well. You can also use shredded cardboard or um, paper for your browns. So your browns are a carbon rich source and your greens are a nitrogen rich source. And uh, you can go into all sorts of details about, about um, how technical to get that and how perfect the ratio needs to be but really if you just do about one part of the greens to two parts of the browns you usually can get a pretty good mix and then if you want to hot compost it just kind of mix that together and then um, make sure it's nice and wet like a wrung out sponge like this is actually the perfect perfect amount of moisture um, 
if I was wanting to start a compost bin with this. Like I, if I squeeze really hard, I might be able to get a drop out, but not quite. And uh, but it's like there's no dryness in this at all. So, and I'll work this in between my layers. This uh, stuff that I pulled out now, and uh, I'll count it pretty much as browns in with that because that's basically what it is, is it's the leftover browns that didn't break down. And then if you're hot composting, you just want to leave it, put a thermometer and you need about a meter by a meter by a meter in size. And uh, just leave it for four days to a week until it heats up into that real hot, hot stage. So I find a compost thermometer really handy. It's nice and long, you get it to the center of the pile. And mine has uh, markings on it so I can see where it's warm active and hot so if you want a hot compost you want it in the hot range which is over about 55 celsius up to about 70 celsius and that's what you're looking for and once you hit that range you want to start stirring it every other day and trying to get a good mix of the things that are on the outside of the bin into the middle and the things that were in the middle out to the outside and top and bottom if you can do that as well but so there there's another batch that's uh pretty much shook out here now because this is so wet, I mean, really I could probably get more out of it if I let it dry and did some more, but I'm not too worried about that. So I'll take this. I have a bin here I've been collecting in. This is what I've been pulling out. Is this bin right in front here. I put a little bit on top of that other bucket in the back, but mostly that was already full waiting to go in. Um, but this is the bin I've pulled out. So I've got that bin there which is roughly the size, I think slightly less capacity than the blue bin. And then I think I'll get at least half that uh, green bin filled again. And then if I take you over to my cold frame, you can see my garden cart is full of compost as well. And this is what I worked on last night. It's just beautiful, beautiful compost. This was about one and a half of those blue buckets in here. Uh, so in the end here, I'd say I'm getting about one part of uh, what I pull out of there is getting sifted out and will go back in the bin and three parts are uh, nice, beautiful, usable compost. So like I said, I could use it just in that rough stage, but uh, I think this is nicer to work with, looks nicer in the ground and uh, when you still have things breaking down, if you're putting it um, to plant in, that can be robbing uh, some of your nitrogen away from your plants uh, that need it. So I find having it like this is nicer, especially if you're planting into it. Just gorgeous. So I think it's worth the effort, but uh, that's for everybody to decide how much time they have and what they want to put into their composting. But you know, I just think it's good to see the difference. Um, a lot of compost bins and uh, compost information will show you know, you put a banana peel and, you know, an apple core in the top or whatever, and then you open up the bottom of your compost and it looks like this when you pull it out. And that's not my experience. Um, if you just do the sit, leave it, sit uh, to break down over time uh, in my climate here, I'm in like Saskatchewan, Canada. So we have uh, about six months of winter, six months of spring, fall and summer. So things just don't break down that quick. So it can be a couple of years and you might get this out of the very bottom few inches. Um, whereas when I do the hot compost method, I can get a couple batches where with that little bit of work of sifting it out, I can get two or three batches, sometimes four if I have a really good year, really work at it, of this coming out throughout my uh, few months. So. That's uh, my take on composting and just it's it's really an easy basic thing to do. So if, you, if you've never tried it before, I say just, you know, get a bin or make a, a wire cage or something to put it in and just get started and just try it and then figure out what's best for you. Just putting it in layers and leaving it or, you know, doing the hot compost method and trying to get it broken down faster. But certainly a great use of all those scraps and organic matter that you have in your yard and your home and uh, it can be going back in your garden to feed it so 
I hope you found this interesting. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time. Bye. Tell me in the comments below, what's your reality for composting? How do you compost? Where do you compost? And do you get nice crumbly compost out at the end, or do you still have to sift out the big chunks?